Islamic everyone. Juma Mubarak. Uh, inshallah, I guess we can get started now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'khiru. Wa na'uzu billah min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yadihi allahu falamudilla lah. Wa man yudlil falahadiya lah. Ashadu an la ilaha illallahu wa hadunu la shrika lah. Anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanatuku allaha haqqa tukatihi. Wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. يا أيها الناس أتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم من يتي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد أيها الأخوة والأخوة Another blessed day, another opportunity for us to get together, learn from one another, and inshallah, as a student of knowledge, I feel grateful and blessed that I have a chance here to share with you some of the, um, some of the learnings that I'm doing, some of the things that uh, we've been continuing on with this uh, 99 Names of Allah series, inshallah, I'll continue again today uh, on this same path, and we'll talk about one of the names of Allah today, which is Al-Mahsi, which means the knower of each separate thing, the one to whom the count of things are known. Uh, the root word of Masi comes from ha saad ya, which has the meanings of to number or enumerate, to count, to aggregate by numbering or counting for the purposes of reckoning, uh, reckoning or ihsa. And this name of Allah SWT that speaks to us really about the day of judgment, you know, the day when all of our actions, in other words, all of our deeds, good, bad, or otherwise, no matter the size, it will be presented to us. We will be held to account on that day and we will be reminded about the things we know and about the things we've forgotten about. And we will be reminded about how we lived our lives, how we treated ourselves, our parents, our siblings, our spouses, our children, our relatives, our neighbors, how we spent our youth, how we spent our wealth, how we used our knowledge and how we lived our lives in general. All of this is being recorded every single second of the day. And as we live and breathe every day, all of this information is, is being recorded and it's going to be known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, on the day of judgment. In Surah Naba, verse 29, we are told, and we have everything recorded precisely. Because Allah is telling us that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is keeping track of all the actions. So by extension, Allah wants us to know that Allah has an account about all of his creations as well. So for accountability to happen, the actions must be associated to a creation. Otherwise, it's just an action and there is no creation who is going to be held to account for that action. So as Muslims, we draw this distinction between the creation and the action because the creation can change and the action is the result of you know, whatever that decision is that was made in that moment. So in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa tells us that we will all be held to account on the day of judgment. And there's no mention that only those who believe or those who do not believe Allah will be brought to account. Every creation in the heaven and the earth will be brought to account that day. In Surah Maryam, verse 93, we are told, there is none in the heavens or the earth who will not return to the most compassionate in full submission. And this verse is telling us that nobody is going to be left out on the day of judgment. Absolutely nobody. Every creation of Allah will have their day of reckoning or day of ihsa. And in this verse, Allah SWT says that the creation will be in full submission to the most compassionate. And, and the verse specifically says, Ar-Rahmani Abda. And Abd means servant or slave. When we are slave, we are in submission to the will of our master. And Allah SWT is telling us that on the day of judgment, Allah is the master. And all the creations of Allah will be in full submission to him. And if we wait until that day to do good or to follow the will of Allah, it's too late by then. You know, we're already there at the doorstep of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're already there uh, for the day of our reckoning. So the appearance of freedom to choose is not going to be there anymore. So while we are in this world, we have free will. We have the choice to reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or submit our free will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And on the day of judgment, our only option will be to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is the master of the day of judgment. And our actions in this world are driven by our choices. And our choices are driven by our desires and our needs. And just because we call ourselves Muslims does not free us from the whims of our human nature. Our human nature is always going to cause us struggles. It's always going to be our personal uh, battle with ourselves. And our nature will always challenge us in the way of what Allah has said. And this is, this is the, the perpetual challenge that Allah um, calls out as jihad or juhad, which means to struggle and primarily with oneself. So this struggle, this jihad is against ourselves. It's a battle against our nafs, uh, which is our, um, uh, you know, our nature itself. And, and some of us struggle more than others. And that's just, you know, part of living. Some of us are really successful where we reach a state of ihsan, where we have completely overcome our nafs or have found a way to overcome our nafs, our desires. And those desires may no longer control us. And that is a state that is so profound that Mela gives us all the opportunity to reach that state. And that's part of the reason why Allah has chosen the word Muslim for those of us who consciously submit our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let's all remember that, you know, jinn are the other creation that Allah has given free will to. Jinn also have the knowledge and ability to use knowledge. If we think about all of the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least um, in my mind, I'm not aware of any other creation that has the ability to work with, with knowledge in an abstract way. You know, we think about uh, creatures in, in the animal kingdom, you know, they have the ability to procreate. They have the ability to build things. You know, you can think about, um, you know, animals that build dams in water, for example, or uh, animals that are able to build nests, birds, for instance. So they have that ability, but we have the ability to work with abstract knowledge. And that is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So going back to the battle with our nerves, for instance, this is a constant battle. And any time in our lives, we can make the mistake of performing an act or doing something that is either haram or not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and goes completely against what Allah has said is, is good for us. Uh, you know, for example, we might um, get lazy uh, about salah, for example, or we might, uh, you know, say something to someone when in the heat of the moment, because they did something or they said something to us that got us all excited and riled up. And then maybe we go so far as to, you know, post something on the internet or social media about that. Uh, all the while forgetting that, you know, whenever you post anything online, this information will live on even after you die. So it's like you would be backbiting even after your life in this world has ended. So those are just examples of, of things that, you know, we might do um, that, that will cause us problem. And in that, in those instances, you know, we should always find ourselves returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or reminding ourselves that, you know what? I need to go back to Allah. I need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And repentance is absolutely part of what Allah has says is important for us as Muslims. And it's mentioned in the Quran. If you look at Surah Al-Furqan, verse 71, Allah says, and whoever repents and does good has truly turned to Allah properly. So not just, you know, ask Allah for forgiveness, but try and stop yourself from repeating the same thing over and over again. And as we know, as creatures, we are prone to making mistakes again and again. That's just part of our human nature. It goes back to the constant struggle that we have with ourself. And ourself is the closest thing we have to controlling anything. You know, we're not able to control other people's actions. We're not able to control what other people will say or other people will do. But the one thing we can control is ourselves. And that constant struggle is a reminder for us to always try and hold on to the one thing that will uh, always be there for us, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all came from Allah and we will all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And without a doubt, you know, turning to Allah for forgiveness is a way for us to remind ourselves that you know, we will, we will all return to Allah one day. In this world, we return to Allah for forgiveness. We return to Allah for help. In the hereafter, once we pass away, we will return to Allah and, and be judged on our actions. And we must ask ourselves that if we believe Allah, truly believe Allah, 
and we truly believe the words of Allah, you know, then we believe in the promise of Allah. One of those promises that Allah makes is that, you know, those who believed on the day of judgment, they will be shown paradise. And those who prefer the fleeting nature of this world will find themselves in the hellfire. And on the day of judgment, those of us who are granted paradise will not feel jealous of those who might receive a higher level or higher maqam in paradise. So there are different levels of uh, paradise. And those of us who might be at the lowest level of paradise, we're not going to feel any jealousy. Alhamdulillah. Because we would have been gifted paradise to us. And Allah keeps his promises. Allah tells us that you know, Allah will keep those promises. And one of the promises Allah makes is to put those who believe Allah in paradise. And also he will fill the hellfire with those who have transgressed and continue to transgress in this world. So our gratitude to Allah for entering paradise will be absolutely there regardless of where we land in paradise, even in the lower levels of paradise. And on the day of reckoning, we will each be handed our book of record. And those of us who will receive our records in our right hand will be absolutely ecstatic. And Allah tells us this in the Quran, in Surah Al-Haqqa, that these people who receive the book in their right hand will say, here everyone, read my record. I surely knew I would face my reckoning. And these are the people who believed Allah. They're the ones who submitted their will for the sake of Allah and believed in the promises made by Allah. They believed Allah and not believe in Allah. And there's a subtle difference in language here. So if we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are limiting ourselves to just the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, when we say that we believe Allah, we are submitting ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but his words in the Quran every previous dispensation and everything that Allah has created and provided for us. So that level of attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has power for us just from the start of the language that we choose to use for ourselves and for how we want to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the people who connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people who believe in Allah promise that they will, they will live the rest of their life in eternal bliss in paradise. Think about that for a second. The rest of eternity, an entire life beyond our present life that continues on forever. And that life is in stark contrast to the life we live today where nothing is certain. Everything's a trial and tribulation. Every single day brings us new challenge. And the one thing that is certain for all of us is that of death. So our present life, one way to think about it, or at least one way that I think about it is nothing more than an illusion. It's a temporary illusion. Nothing from this world will carry forward, not our wealth, not our children, just our deeds will follow us into the grave. Our deeds will follow us into the hereafter. In this world, when we hear about somebody dying or passing away, you know, our own mortality starts coming into focus. And we see this every day, you know, in the newspaper or, or in emails that we learned that somebody in our community member has passed away. And our first inclination when we hear about something like this or, or read about something like this is we want to know how old they were. And the next thing we want to know is how did they die? So if we hear about someone young who dies, our thought is, wow, you know, we, we hear ourselves or other people telling us that, wow, they were taken too soon. You know, they didn't get to live their full life. They didn't get to experience all these wonderful things in the world or, you know, it wasn't their time. You know, these are all, all things that we tend to hear other people say or we tend to ourselves say. Uh, but all of this is nothing more than FOMO, or as, as we call, you know, fear of missing out, our personal fear of missing out that's speaking. We feed ourselves, uh, you know, these ideas to comfort ourselves. And we, we, we want to find empathy. And these are ways in which we try to do that. And we're telling ourselves these stories that life in this world is a pursuit we must strive for. And it is a pursuit. One of the things that we pursue is how we root ourselves in this world. Is it truly rooted in the belief of Allah? Is it rooted in something else? We surround ourselves with people who echo these affirmations to us because there's comfort in it. You know, we want to, we want to surround ourselves with people who believe the same thing. We want to surround ourselves with people who share the same ideas, share the same ideals with us. And 
you know, we plan for tomorrow, the next week, the next month, the next quarter, or the next year, as if we're guaranteed that we will have life for, for that long of a time. And we forget, you know, even for a brief moment, we forget that Allah only allows us to live until our time is up. We don't know the precise minute our life in this world will end. Uh, and it's a good thing. You know, in my mind, at least, it's an absolute mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we don't know exactly when our time is up in this world. If we all knew when we will die, then what kind of actions will we perform? You know, will we, will we just be more pious? Will we live our life in, in fear, constant fear of the minute that we will die? We will, will we live in complete and utter carelessness until the time we die? And how much chaos will there be in the world if we all knew when our lives will end? Could you imagine if everybody knew that for a second? You know, what will, what will we teach the children if they knew, you know, when their last days, if we knew when the last day of our children will be? What if those, those our children would live less than we will? How do we then treat, you know, our children? What do we teach them? if we know that to be the case? Do we console them? Do we help them? I mean, there's like an existential crisis that comes about if we knew exactly the day, the hour, the minute, the second, and how our life is gonna end. That kind of existential crisis is just absolutely paralyzing. So not knowing that and having us just be in bliss of that is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So suffice it to say, you know, all of those questions would consume us and, and, and we, would, we would be consumed more by death than we would be consumed by competing with each other on levels of piety. You know, and this is something that the Messenger of Allah, uh, Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said that, you know, truth leads to piety and piety leads to Jannah. And if you think about the work that we do, you know, we're given deadlines all the time. You know, you have to finish your task by a certain date, by a certain hour. Um, you know, if we, if we don't have these kinds of deadlines, then maybe the work just never gets finished. Or if we don't finish that task, maybe, you know, another person, another team of ours may not be able to continue and do their work. Or, or if we're in a business, maybe our business will suffer. Our customers in that business would suffer, causing the business to fail. Allah has given us, <clears throat> Allah has given us, these deadlines as well in our daily lives. So if we think about, you know, the rituals that Allah has given us, something as simple as salah, you know, that's a reminder for us that there is a deadline, even to our lives, even to salah. So before the day is over, there's a deadline for fajr. There's a deadline for dhuhr. There's a deadline for asr, maghrib, and isha. And all of these deadlines, each one of these salah, these prayers, have their designated time. And their time starts and their time ends. Day starts, day ends. And if you think about the month of Ramadan, Allah has given us an entire month where we are told to reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran. And what do we do at the end of Ramadan? We celebrate. We call it Eid al-Fitr. There's a big celebration with our community members. And what are we celebrating? You know, we're celebrating the struggles that we went through during the month of Ramadan. We celebrate the, the, you know, the, the giving that we did. We celebrate the connections that we made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We celebrate the recital of the Quran if you finish the Quran during the month. In a way, Ramadan is a metaphor for the struggles in this world that ends with the celebration of a day when we are grateful for the opportunity to be rewarded for our efforts. And this is, this, is the, this is one of those lessons that Allah has given us, you know, be patient because our reward isn't in this world, our reward is in the hereafter. And, you know, just like any examination, any test, um, we patiently await, we anxiously await. But in the meantime, you constantly prepare. And that's what the metaphor of the month of Ramadan is also like for us. You know, we constantly prepare for that day when we will meet our creator. You know, it's kind of like on that day of judgment when our book, our book of deeds will be handed to us in our right hand. And if we did well, then we would be absolutely ecstatic that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us entry into paradise. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardon all of us, every single one of us in our community and grant us all Jannatul Allah. Ameen.
my dear brothers and sisters, you know, we seek to benefit from all the attributes of Allah. These 99 names of Allah, um, you know, come from what Allah has called himself in the Quran and also from the Ahadith. And each and every one of these names are a way for us to reflect on how we can do better. We try to emulate our creator because all of the best qualities come from our creator. And some of these qualities are, are you know, ones we can emulate, we can do something with. Others, maybe not so much. And in the case of al Masi, you know, our share in this attribute is tenuous at best. The ability to count every single thing and have knowledge of every single thing is beyond our capacity, beyond our means. You know, the knowledge that we do have comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't have the ability to identify every morsel of knowledge which is going to benefit us. And this doesn't mean that we should then despair that al Masi is, is beyond our reach, but we should then appreciate the fact that, you know, there is a creator beyond us who is far more capable and that we are receiving this knowledge and we are able to benefit from this knowledge no matter how small it is, no matter, you know, the, the source that it comes from. And we can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide us with guidance and knowledge, and we should ask. And we can ask Allah to give us wisdom, and we should always ask that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should make dua for that. And we should seek knowledge for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's a mercy and blessing for our community when it is thriving with scholars. Because these are the people, these are the keepers of knowledge. You know, I'm merely a student of knowledge and not a scholar like many of our uh, Islamic scholars who are out there serving uh, in the path of Allah and serving our communities out there. So there's a huge benefit to us as members of the Muslim community to have these kinds of Islamic scholars and have this kind of Islamic scholarship be part of it, uh, part of our community and part and continue to be part of our tradition. It is recorded in uh, a Tirmidhi, is an authentic hadith where the Messenger of Allah said that indeed Allah does not take away knowledge by removing it from the people, but he takes away knowledge by taking the scholars until there remains no scholar and the people begin to ask the ignorant leaders. So they give their verdict without knowledge and they will go astray and they will lead the people astray. So I truly hope to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah keeps us all guided on the path that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our Muslim ummah even our community here in Austin and any, everywhere else in the world where there is a community of Muslims to bless them with scholars, scholars who dedicate their lives truly with honesty in the service of Islam and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen. Allahumma ameen. Akulla kulli haza wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum. Wa li sa'il al-Muslimin wa astaghfiruhu. Inna huwa huwa rahim. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us all. And I ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of us. ربنا حب لنا من أزواجنا وزرياتنا كرة عيون وجعلنا للمتكين إماما ربنا فاغفر لنا زنوبنا وكفر أن سياتنا وتوفنا من الأبرار ربي جل مكي وصلاة ومن زريات ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك نمن ونبنا وإليك المصير ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا واغفر لنا ربنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكننا من الخاسرين ربنا عملنا فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وأنت خير الرحمين إن الله يأمر بالأدل والأحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين آمين May Allah guide us all and may you all have a blessed Jummah